So Paul, you've got your camera in hand. The other day we went through a whole bunch of settings. Is there anything else that you need advice about on your camera? How about the ND filter? Oh, the, the no, no drama, drama filter. filter. Adam, why would someone want to use a no drama filter? Well, when your scene is just too dramatic, you want to kind of tone it down. Oh, right, too much intensity. Yeah. You'd put an ND on, bland as sh Yes. Because you want your water to be completely flat, lifeless, and texture free. And flaccid. Flaccid. <laughs> what kind of focal length? should I use here? Oh, you should always, absolutely always be shooting at 16 millimeters. Super wide, all the time. Everyone who's anyone knows that to get a good landscape image, you have to be super wide. Wouldn't you say, Adam? Always, always. Yeah? What about 14 millimeter? Oh, oh, I rarely use that, but yeah, that's something oh. better. If you've got the girth, use it. Oh. Anything else, Paul? I've always wondered what the WB stands for. Oh, what's that one? Uh, why bother? Why bother? Oh. So Paul, now that you have mastered every possible setting on your camera, is there anything else you want to ask me about? Yes, Gavin. Actually, I was wondering about your refund policy. This video is sponsored by well, the truth is it's not actually sponsored by anyone, but I managed to escape that awkward conversation while on yet another ferry ride to a world-class landscape photography location. And on this day, we were headed to my all-time favorite island in all of the Faroe Islands. And I was very excited to share the best viewpoints with the guys. Even Grumpy McGrumperson was blown away by the impressive grandeur of this very special place. I was, however, a little bit concerned about the amount of blue sky. The typically unreliable weather forecast called for gloomier conditions, which would have suited Grumpenhausen von Pong, as like all vampires, he hates sunlight with a passion and avoids it at all costs. Just look at those imposing cliffs. Our ultimate goal was to be up there to catch the afternoon light dancing majestically over the sea stacks. What do you think, Uncle? Beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. Get the lights crap. Well, I had to agree with him, but I could feel it in my giblets. The light would change. So today I've brought the guys to the southernmost island of the Faroes, which is called Suoroi. And the reason why you would come here is because of these spectacular cliffs that you can see in the background. Now, this is a 16 millimeter lens, so of course they probably look really tiny and squished right now, but those cliffs go up to 450 meters in height, which is very, very impressive. Now, when I come here, I usually start down here on this beach, shooting towards the cliffs, and then also in the opposite direction, which has these amazing rock formations, which strangely remind me of the Quirang on the Isle of Skye. There's some very close similarities and I guess there should be because this group of islands isn't really all that far from Scotland when you think about it. So now those cliffs that you see in the distance, once we've worked this scene a little bit and waited for the light to move round, we'll head on up to the top of those cliffs and start shooting down towards those epic sea stacks that you can see in the distance. Now of course the light is way too harsh right now, so at the moment we're pretty much just scoping out compositions that we will hopefully get to shoot later when there's a bit more dynamic and interesting light. Uh, today it's a very, very blue day with lots of puffy clouds, which is beautiful, but it's not the best light for landscape photography. So we have about five hours to scope out some shots and get some better light, and then we have to get the last ferry to go back. But I'm sure in that time we'll probably find something very juicy. I do not exaggerate when I say that the juice factor was off the charts. This kind of geology just fascinates me. It looks, looks like a giant took a bread knife and just started carving up the landscape in a fit of rage. Now often when I'm waiting for the light to change and there's maybe an hour or two to spare, even once I've found some compositions, what I like to do is set up a time lapse uh, because then you can get the changing of the light and it makes a nice little bit of video clip and there's a chance that during 
during that one or two hours of or however long your time lapse is, you might get one frame that captures that perfect moment of light while you're at the other side of the beach shooting in a completely different direction. So yeah, I think a time lapse is always a, a good uh, way to fill a bit of free time. And when I shoot time lapse, I always shoot raw files. It's uh, I, I never bother with the camera's sort of built-in video output option. I'll always shoot every single frame as a still raw file. And then I've got more processing power. And like I just said, you can always pull that single frame out and make a nice still image from it. It was so ridiculously windy though that my time lapse was definitely suffering an episode of the shakes. And as spectacular as it was down on the lower part of the cliffs, it was definitely time to take the boys up to the very top of the cliffs that you can see in this time lapse. So we headed back to the Kia Pro lapse and drove to the top where we met the most talkative sheep in the world. Mum, I think he's got snacks. Snacks? Snacks. Snacks? Yeah, yeah, I think he's got snacks. No, Mum, he uh, hasn't got snacks. Oh, God, you got me hopes up there. You, I'm just going to walk off. There's only so much grass a sheep can stomach. You're right, Mum, this is bullshit. If you suffer from vertigo, I would recommend that you look away now. Yeah, there's a lot of that in the Faroe Islands, but don't worry, I was being extra careful, mostly because I just didn't want to be famous for being that photographer who died because he slipped on a stinking sheep cake. So now that we're up on the cliffs here, my primary concern is not dying. Um, these are very, very slippery edges, and once you're off that edge, that's it, you're done. So getting good pictures is not my primary concern. But I don't know if you can see it, but Uncle Grumpy is right on the very top of that cliff. There, you can just see this tiny little figure. That's uh, Grumpalacious doing his thing. I hope he's being careful. But just look at this absolutely majestic scene. I mean, the colours, the drama. We just need a bit of light right now. I mean, it's again, it's still, it's still Simpsons light. You know, it's still postcard blue skies. I would like a bit more drama than this. Yesterday we had far more drama than we could possibly handle. Let's have a bit of that over here and I'll get a killer shot. As I very carefully walked along the edge of the cliff, I could feel my composition starting to take shape. The pieces of the puzzle were all falling into place and as a landscape photographer, there is no greater high than when your image finally reveals itself. What an amazing scene this is. I just, I can't comprehend the sheer size and amazing shapes of these cliffs and these sea stacks with the surf blasting all around it. The colors are amazing, the shapes are amazing. All I need now is some moody light. I'm doubtful that we're gonna get that because we've probably only got two more hours then we've gotta get back to the ferry. There is a chance, I think the sun will drop a little bit lower. Well, I know it's gonna drop a little bit lower, but it depends on what the clouds do as to whether or not we get some special light. But even if this is the best that I get, I'm very, very happy with this because this is just just unbelievable. Let me just turn this around and show you what I'm doing. So I'm going to attempt to talk you through this composition. So of course, it's I've got these amazing dramatic cliffs in the top of the frame there. That's the case. It's so obvious that I have to get that. But what I'm trying to do, I've walked along. If you look in the shot here, I've walked along this edge and I'm looking for something to put in front of this whole scene, something to frame it nicely. And I think I've done a fairly decent job of it. What I love is these little wildflowers that you've got on this cliff edge just down here. And and then I love this it's kind of, it's like a C shape in the bottom of the frame that comes up and then I love these rocks that frame up on the right and point you, that, that rock there is kind of pointing towards the scene on all of the islands and the sea stacks. And of course, it's all about these cliffs and the sea stacks. And as a composition, it's very, very obvious. And I'm, sh I'm zoomed in at about 20 millimeter. Um, I could go wider and fit more of the sky in, which I might do if I get something going on in the clouds, but at the moment, they're just white Homer Simpson credits 
clouds, you know, so it's it's not that exciting, but it's still a, a brilliant shot. And all I can do now is just sit here and wait for something to happen and hope that the other guys don't catch up and come and steal my composition. <laughs> oh, here comes Grumpacious one. I think I know what he wants. What do you want, Uncle Grumpy? I've come to steal your composition. Well, I asked for bad weather and now I got what I wanted. Massive cloud just came in. I've got hail and I've got rain. Now, this is not good news for my camera. However, it's just the kind of conditions that I might get epic light. So we'll see some nice clouds have come in. What I want is those clouds to cover the cliffs up there and then a little gap to open up and get a splash of light on the lower cliffs. That's what I want. Will I get it? Well, I kept getting these momentary gaps of light, which did have potential, but in this kind of weather, my battery sucking camera can be somewhat neurotic and hypersensitive. So it keeps raining, which is what I asked for. That is kind of what I want, but uh, it, it comes and goes so quickly that I don't want to put my camera back in the bag and then take it out, because I might just lose that precious two second gap of epic light. So what I've done is I've got my camera nestled in my considerable bosom <laughs> just to keep it out of the rain. And then if it stops, if I get that split second gap, I can quickly throw it on the tripod and then put it back under my waterproof jacket and uh, get the shot without faffing around with the camera bag. Well, I did get that gap, but you tell me, was it worth the flights, hikes, ferries, hotels, and of course, braving the elements on a windy cliff top? I really love those tiny pink little wildflowers that I mentioned earlier. And the other thing that I love is this atmospheric rain cloud that I waited so patiently for as it saunters in to water the cliff tops and keep them nice and green. Now I feel that this image, well it captures that momentary shift in the weather which is what I always think about when I think of the Faroe Islands. What I love about the Faroes, and, and Scotland as well, is they have very similar weather and you get these cloudy days with patches of bright, bright sunlight. And it gives you this, what I call, stripy light. And it's basically where the gaps in the clouds let the sun blast through. So you've got sections of darkness and then sections of brightness. And it's really, really contrasty. And so when your landscape is like this and you've got lots of green, especially on green cliffs and hills, it's really nice to see that stripy light giving lots and lots of contrast and dynamics. And when you process your images, you can really make that, that difference between dark and light pop and be extremely vibrant. Now this next shot is obviously during a much clearer moment where the rain clouds had vanished and that light provided a perfect example of the stripy light that I just mentioned. And you can see it in effect on that green cliff top. And I just love the added action of the seagulls as well as the bright hot spots and shadows on the water that give it that lovely aqua marine glow. Now this is the exact same composition as the earlier shot, but look at how much more dynamic the light is in that foreground with those lovely shapes in the soil that really pop with highlights and shadows. But what I really want to know is which shot do you like best? I think I've had an epiphany about the type of landscape photographer that I am. It seems to me that the shots that I get most excited about and the shots that I tend to c capture the most are overlooks. It's those viewpoints that kind of, you know, imagine that you've been whacking through a jungle or a forest or climbing up some mountain up to a cliff edge and then you reach this point where the view reveals itself and it opens up. And, and that's what I'm always looking for, that sense of awe. You know, when you get to a place and you just involuntarily say wow and I think you could call it cheating it's like it almost is cheating like if you go to epic places and you get half decent light you'll get epic shots all you've got to know how to do is compose and get your settings dialed in although composition is by far the most important factor but it's it's if I'm honest it's almost lazy you show up to a place like this 
spend about two hours looking for a nice way to frame a very epic scene like this and you can't go wrong it's almost too easy so in, in a nutshell I'm a lazy photographer yeah let's be honest so we're almost done here at the dramatic cliffs of Suoroi we're gonna miss the sunset but uh, we still get some pretty good light before we have to jump on this last ferry home I wish we could have stayed the night and got some absolutely tremendous glow on the top of the peaks there it's not to be on this trip I'm very happy with the light that we got and the shots that we got even Uncle Grumpy said this is the best view I've seen on the Faroe Islands so you know it must be good.